السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We continue with the upper limb orthopedic and our lecture today about the wrist problems. We start with Kienbock disease. Kienbock disease is a form of ischemic necrosis probably due to the chronic stress or injury. It has been suggested that relative shortening of ulna, which is called negative ulnar variance, predisposed to the stress overload of the unit between the distal edge of the radius and carpus. Clinically, the patient, usually young adult, presented with pain and stiffness, dull pain. Grip strength is diminished. In later stage, wrist movement are limited and painful. Pathology. Four stage of pathological process of keen box disease. Stage one is ischemia without neck or radiographic abnormality. Stage two, trabecular necrosis with a newborn formation and increased radiographic density, but little or no distortion of shape. Stage three, collapse of the bone. Stage four, disruption of radiocarbal congruence and secondary osteoarthrosis. We need MRI for early diagnosis before X-ray changes will appear. But X-ray at first show no abnormality. Then the bone look mottled, sclerotic and irregular in shape and squashed. Lately, there may be osteoarthrosis of the joint. Treatment. In early cases, splintage of the wrist for six to weeks, six to twelve weeks, relieve pain and possibly reduce mechanical stress. Stress. However, if pain persists and even more, if the bone began to flatten, surgery is indicated, and there is multiple type of surgery. Maybe drilling of the unit, uh, arthrodesis of carbus, carbus bone, removal of unit, excision of the unit, or arthrodesis of the wrist. This is multiple picture of stages of the uh, Kienbock disease. To start with, to start with, the right picture is MRI of Kienbock disease. The best way to detect the early stage of Kienbock disease. And the left one is just uh, an increased density. And the middle picture is a collapse of the unit. Second subject is the Kervan disease. The Kervan disease is the second subject to discuss. This is caused by reactive thickening of the sheath around the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus tendon within the first extensor tranquillum. It may be initiated by overuse, but it also occurs spontaneously during pregnancy. Clinically, women usually affected between the age of 40, 40 to 50. Pain on the radial side of the wrist. Visible swelling and tenderness over the radial styloid and the tendon sheath feel thick and hard. But the pneumonic sign is elicited by Finkelstein test. Resisted thumb extension in Samia Hitchhacker sign is also painful. What is Finkelstein test? The examiner, how can we do Finkelstein test? The examiner plays the thumb, the patient thumb across the palm in full flexion and then holding the patient hand firmly, turn the wrist sharply into adduction. In a positive test, this is acutely painful. Repeated the movement with the thumb left free is relatively painless. Resisted thumb extension, we call it hitch hacker sign, is also painful. This is site of maximum tenderness on the radial styloid and the way of Finkelstein test on the left side. Treatment. 
Treatment of the Kerbin. In early cases, it can be relieved by con- corticosteroid injection into the tendon sheath, sometimes combined with hand therapy like ultrasound, friction, and splintage. But in a resisted case, surgery is indicated. Type of surgery is decompression of the first uh, extensor compartment, release of the tendon sheath. The other subject is intersection syndrome. This condition, otherwise known as crossover syndrome or peritendinitis crepitans, clinically pain and swelling and decrepitus over the tendon of extensor bolus brevis and abductor bolus longus, 4 to 6 cm proximal to the extensor retinaculum. It is found in weightlifter. The condition is generally attributed to friction between these tendons and the underlying longitudinally aligned extender, extensor tendons, leading to adventitial bursa or tenosynovitis. There is usually an associated tenosynovitis within the second extensor compartment containing, containing extensor carboradialis longus and the brevis. How can we treat this crossover syndrome or crossover disorder? We can treat by rest, splintage, and steroid injection locally. In resisted cases, surgical widening of second compartment and exploration of intersection. This picture so the intersection syndrome. This picture of intersection syndrome between the crossover tendon and extensor long extensor tendon. The other subject is carpal tunnel syndrome. In the normal carpal tunnel, there is a barely room, there is a barely room for all the tendon and the median nerve. Any increase of the size of the content of the canal or decrease in the size of the canal lead to compression and ischemia of the median nerve. This syndrome is however common at the menopause rheumatoid arthritis, chronic renal failure, gout, pregnancy, and hypothyroids. Clinically, it is far common in women than in men, but in younger patients, it is not uncommon to find a relative related factor such as a pregnancy, rheumatoid disease. Usually, the age group is between 4 to 40 to 50 years of old. Pain and paresthesia occur in the distribution of the median nerve in the hand. Night burning pain, tingling, tingling, and numbness. The symptom may be relieved by hanging the arm over the side of the bed or shaking the arm. In advanced case, there may be clumsiness and weakness, particularly with the task requiring requiring fine manipulation, such as fasting buttons. Tunnel sign is positive, percussion over the median nerve. Fallen test positive, holding the wrist fully flexed for less than 60 seconds reproduce the symptom of uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. In late case, there may be wasting of thinner muscle. We call it shelf sign and weakness of thumb abduction. EMG and nerve conduction study are reserved for those with atypical symptom. This picture show the pain or distribution of symptom along the finger supplied by median nerve, which is three and a half radial fingers. And this picture show uh, wasting, wasting of uh, thinner muscle produce shelf sign. Treatment. Light sibilant that prevent wrist flexion can help those with a pregnancy related symptom because surgery in such a case should be avoided. Steroid injection into the carpal tunnel provide, provide temporary relief. Surgery is the treatment of choice. 
Endoscopic carpal tunnel release offer an alternative to open surgery, but with a slight uh, and it is associated with a slight quicker post-operative rehabilitation. However, the complication rate is higher. This is the right picture showing the open surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome, while the left picture is uh, showing the injection, local injection of steroid into the carpal tunnel locally. Other subject is ulnar nerve compression. Like the median nerve can be compressed either at the elbow, we call it cubital tunnel syndrome, which is common, and less commonly at the wrist compression in Guyon Canal. Cubital tunnel syndrome. Ulnar nerve can be trapped or compressed first within the cubital tunnel by bone abnormality, ganglion, hypertrophied synovium, and so and other causes. Second, proximal to the cubital tunnel by the facial arcade of Strother. Third, distal to the cubital tunnel as it passes through the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris to enter the forearm. We call it Osborne Canal. And the last, sometimes it is stretched by cubitus vulgus deformity or simply by holding the elbow flexors, uh, uh, sorry, holding the elbow flexed for long period. This picture show the location of ulnar nerve. And this picture show the ulnar nerve entering the cubital tunnel. Clinically, cubital tunnel syndrome can be presented with numbness and tingling in the little and the ulnar half of the ring finger. Second, symptom may be intermittent and related to the specific elbow posture, like elbow flexed while holding, such as elbow flexed while holding, example, the newspaper. In later cases, there may be weakness of the grip, slight clawing, and intrinsic muscle wasting, prominent sign and weakness of abductor digiti minimi can often be demonstrated. Bone and soft tissue abnormality may be obvious. Tunnel sign or tunnel compression test tenderness over the nerve behind the medial epicondyle. The diagnosis may be confirmed by nerve conduction study. We call it AMG and nerve conduction study. We have some note about the Froman sign. Froman sign present paralysis of adductor bolus muscle and interosseous muscle of the hand, of the uh, thumb, which provide adduction of the thumb and extension of interpharyngeal joint of the thumb. The flexor bolus longus, innervated by median nerve, will substitute for adductor bolus, innervated by the ulnar nerve, which is affected and cause the thumb to go into hyperflexion at the interpharyngeal joint. This is cubital tunnel syndrome pain. The above, the upper picture show the cubital tunnel syndrome pain. And the below, uh, this picture show the wasting of the interosseous muscle. While the other picture, this picture, show the froment sign. The upper picture, negative froment sign, while the lower picture is positive froment sign. Treatment. Conservative treatment such as modification of posture and splintage of the elbow in mid-extension at night should be tried. If the symptom persists and there is intrinsic wasting, Surgic, surgical decompression is indicated. Option includes simple release of the roof of the cubital tunnel or transposition of ulnar nerve anteriorly.
this is the type of surgery. This is the ulnar nerve a rod, and we transport either we uh, decompress the roof of the cubital tunnel or we transpose the tendon or the ulnar nerve anteriorly. This picture is picture for compression of the ulnar nerve at the rest of the guyon canal by ganglia. This picture, uh, this is a blue, a blue shape, is ganglion cyst compressing the ulnar nerve. Produce picture like a cubital tunnel syndrome, but affection of only the hand without affection of the forearm. The other subject is a swelling around the wrist. There is multiple type of swelling at the wrist. First of all, ganglion cyst. This is the most common swelling at the wrist. It arises from leakage of synovial fluid from the joint or tendon sheath and contain glary viscous fluid. Although it can appear anywhere around the carpus, it usually develops at the dorsal surface of the wrist. It can arise also from the tendon sheath. Clinically, Clinically, the ganglion presented ganglia presented as follow. The patient you usually young adult. There will be painless lump, although occasionally there is slight ache and weakness. The lump is well defined, cystic and not tender. It can sometimes be transilluminated. It does not move with the tendons. The back of the wrist is the commonest site. Less frequently, ganglia emerge, uh, emerge alongside the radial artery on the volar aspect. Treatment. Treatment. The ganglia can be safely left alone. It often disappears spontaneously. It can be aspirated to reassure the patient. Surgery sometimes is indicated and surgical good surgical removal of all abnormal tissue decrease the rate of recurrence this is the type of ganglia on the right side dorsal ganglia on the left side volar ganglia this is dorsal ganglia and this is volar ganglia The other subject or the other type of swelling is compound palmar ganglia. This lesion is neither a ganglia nor compound. Chronic inflammatory process distend the common sheath of a flexor tendon, both above and below the flexor retinaculum. Rheumatoid arthritis and TB are the commonest causes. The synovial membrane becomes thick, thickened and villous. The amount of fluid is increased and it may contain fibrin particles molded by repeated movement to the shape of melon seeds. The tendon may eventually fry it and rupture. Clinically, compound ganglia presented with pain which is unusual but paresthesia due media due to the median nerve compression may occur. The swelling is hourglass in shape, bulging above and below the flexor retinaculum. It is not warm or tender. Fluid can be pushed from one part to the other. We call it cross fluctuation. In a treatment, if the condition is related to the TB, general treatment is begun in form of anti-TB drugs. The content of the sac are evacuated and streptomycin is installed and the rest is rested in sublint. If this measure fail, the entire flexor, flexor sheath is dissected out. Complete excision is also the best treatment when the cause is rheumatoid arthritis. This picture shows compound ganglia 
typical of compound ganglia. It is hourglass shape and the content, uh, the content can be bulged uh, above and below the flexor retinaculum and can be pushed from one part to the other. We call it fl cross fluctuation. In TB, we need general treatment of TB, aspiration and streptomycin injection of the sac. Rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, complete excision is the best treatment. Thank you for your listening. In this picture, we can show the injection of the carbon disease, local injection of steroid to the tendon sheath. Thank you.